Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video I want to talk about credit portfolio models. Now this is just very quickly going to be an overview. We're not going to get into too much detail. Instead, what I'm going to be doing for students who want to know a little bit more, I will be attaching PDF documents of these models and you can have a little bit of a deeper dive. So just, yeah, just to manage expectations, we are giving just a quick overview here. Um, before the previous models that we've looked at, specifically the structural models of the Merton um, or the migration models of Yarrow, we were looking at the probability of a single bond defaulting. What we want to do now is we want to consider a portfolio of bonds and essentially we will be using the value at risk framework. And just a quick reminder, um, if you haven't watched the market risk course, Value at risk essentially is a statement about risk and it captures three dimensions of risk, the frequency, the severity and the duration of the total risk portfolio. And an example is saying like there is a 95% chance that we won't lose more than 100 million over the next 10 days. 10 days is the duration, 100 million is the minimum severity and 95% you can think of as the confidence, which is a little bit of, well, it's a little bit connected to, to frequency. Now, value at risk is very much a framework, not necessarily a model on its own. So a lot of different models can be used to calculate the value at risk. And what we're going to be using the uh, value at risk for, for in this video is for a bond portfolio. And the big thing about a portfolio is that we must take into consideration correlation. So we must look at correlation, how are these bonds connected, is there any benefit in diversification or are we just you know opening ourselves up to a lot of concentration so this is very much like i say going to be just a quick overview of the various approaches to create credit portfolio models so the first one i want to talk about is the multivariate structural model so you can take the Merton or the KMV approach, which we spoke about earlier, and you can extend them for a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of bonds. And in this situation, you might use the multivariate T distribution with the correlation matrix, or you can even be a little bit fancy and use a copula, which will allow the correlations to change. And I'll try putting the appendix in time. I'll try add in a whole bunch of information about copulas and multivariate distribution. So if those of you who are interested in the maths can go through it. Then we're also going to be looking at this idea of the multivariate migration model. Again, this was the Yarrow model, but you can now extend it. And uh, a model that is famous for using the migration approach to extend it to a bond portfolio is something known as the credit metric model. And for this model, I have attached the PDF and I will be including quite a few of the graphics that I found in that PDF in this video. Um, so I'm, I just wanna actually show two, two of them to you right now. The first one I find very, very interesting because when we, when we did this whole course on market risk, remember we challenged this assumption of normality of market, um, market risk and market returns and we said that it was very much a simplified approach because we, you know, the maths, it makes the maths quite easy. Um, credit risk, especially in this credit metric uh, document, they're identifying that, okay, no, hold on, this, this normal assumption is actually wrong and credit risks are actually, um, they actually have this, this idea where they are negatively skewed, which means most of the time they're gonna be, you know, uh, generate a gain, but they also have these fat tails. You can see over here, you've got these fat tails of losses. So they understand that the models need to incorporate distributions that are a lot more complicated than the normal. Of course, of course, the normal keeps popping up no matter where, even when people are aware of it. And you kind of see this model, um, or this graphic that they had further down in the paper, chart 5.2, where they're looking at the, the bonds uh, with the different credit rating agencies and they say this is how the price moves and you can see they very much have got the normal distribution um, along a whole bunch of values so they still they're still uh, revert back to it but it is quite quite interesting to see that they do acknowledge um, like i say i would say that this is not only just the distribution of credit returns but also of market returns it's just we use this normal for more of a simplicity but like i said we talk about that in the market risk course um coming back to to credit risk 
we can use also a whole bunch of actuarial models and there's a whole bunch out there. Um, another PDF that I will be attaching is the Credit Risk Plus model which was developed in um, the late 90s. It kind of uses the Poisson distribution um, and I mean this is the whole idea is actuarial science has created a lot of beautiful risk models to deal with mortality and you know various other insurance whether it's short-term claims and pensions and all of those things. Um, and that's the thing is that if you have enough data with credit risk you can very comfortably use the actuarial models. You could even build a ruin theory model and take all of these things into consideration. So you can use the actuarial models if you have the data and if, like we said in the previous video, you're comfortable with the assumption that the future can be predicted by the past returns. And like we said, that very much is the case with actuarial risks like mortality and morbidity. However, it's not necessarily the case when it comes to asset managers' performances, specifically in the speculative realm of the hedge funds. Um, but like I said, there are lots of different approaches. You can even build up survival models uh, with the Gumbel copula. You can even build something called a common shock model with the marshall Olkin copula. So there are a whole bunch of different approaches. And I think the big thing with credit risk, or well, this was one of the things that, that kind of caused a little bit of the world financial crisis, was that these models were incredibly difficult and sophisticated and complicated, but their Achilles heel was their dependency on getting correlation correct. And a lot of the times they were using the normal copula, which didn't allow the correlation uh, to change in such an extreme way as what we observed. So it's much better to use the Gumbel or the marshall Olkin copula um, instead of the normal one. But like I say, that's probably the big Achilles heel of all of these uh, portfolio models, whether it be credit, whether it be market, or whether it even be a total portfolio where you're combining market and credit together, it's trying to get correlation correct is incredibly difficult. Then there's also the, the economists. They've come up with a whole bunch of various models, you know, models that look at what is the impact of interest rate and inflation on the probabilities of, of default. So like I said, there are there's lots and lots of different approaches to credit risk. Um, this course very much just wants to give an overview, look at the principles, look at some of the drawbacks to some of the common ones, but this is almost an inexhaustible topic because new models are popping up every single day. And of course, when you're dealing with a portfolio, you do need to look at the recovery rates. And recovery rates, um, like I say, is the portfolio model not only needs to tell us how many bonds are going to default, but we also need to know what is the loss for each of them. And you can think of recovery rates as the, the inverse of a loss distribution. So we will take the same approach as a loss distribution. So loss is saying how much we lost from this event happening. Recovery rate is, is essentially saying, um, given the maximum loss, how much were we still able to, to recover? So they're very, very similar. But one thing that you need to understand, especially when it comes to, say, credit risk and how it's different to insurance risks, is that the distributions that we fit will be different. So remember, with the loss distributions, it was very much the log normal or the exponential. It was these you know, positively fat-tailed uh, distributions. Whereas what we can see specifically with credit risk is you have the, the beta distribution, which could be used in some situations for uh, for loss distributions, but we're going to see that it fits much better with with the credit risk, and it will allow for the different types of bonds. So you can see senior unsecured. There's quite a good chance that you're going to get the majority. Sorry about that. Um, there is quite a big chance that you're going to get the majority of your your uh, bond value back. Whereas if it's, say, a junior bond, you can see that you're only going to be recovering a very, very small amount, 10%, uh, if not less. So also important to understand that the seniority of the class is also going to have an impact on the bond's recovery rate. But at the end of the day, all of these different models are trying to do the same thing. And they're trying to calculate the value at risk due to credit and you can see they will so this is one that's 
coming back to credit metrics, which is the migration portfolio approach, you're looking at exposure, you're looking at a whole bunch of different factors, you're looking at correlations, but at the end of the day, you want to say, okay, what is the portfolio value at risk due to the credit risk that I have taken out? Anyway, this has very, very much been an overview of the portfolio models. I will be attaching some PDFs so that you can go and look at the credit metrics and the credit risk plus in more detail. And like I say, in time, I will be adding an appendix trying to explain copulas and I'll be doing it in a very general way, but you can then apply it to the credit risk approach. Other than that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.